All right, fellow coder, welcome to this next installment in our uh, playlist where we are diving into how to create a, uh, well, full stack web application from scratch using React and uh, Java via Spring Boot. Uh, in this installment, we're going to be diving into uh, more of the how to make things look pretty topic. Um, and we're going to be leveraging something called a card or moreover cards inside of the uh, bootstrap CSS framework. Bootstrap is one of the most popular CSS frameworks out there and it is designed to help us make our jobs as programmers and slash sort of designers um, to make our, our lives easier. So um, I want to talk about cards because I think they are a very good way to have a, a you know design mechanism uh, implemented in your code um, and that's what we'll be talking about today. So if that sounds like it is of interest to you, stick around. All right, let's dive into it. So a bit of background first before we dive into the code. Um, so where we are right now in the series is we are ready to work on our app's dashboard screen and make it look pretty. If you have, if this is the first video in this series that you're watching, um, there's like 20 or so videos before this one um, in a playlist uh, that should be you know linked up somewhere uh, below this video. So if you haven't watched any of the ones uh, before this, um, you might want to do that to get some context. But Basically, to catch you up, if you don't want to watch all those videos and you just want to dive into learning about cards, uh, the context is that we have an assignment submission app where we have students who are submitting their assignments for code review. So they, have, um, they are doing uh, code, they're doing coding assignments, and they're submitting their assignments to get reviewed by a code reviewer. Now, I'm going to be using this app in the real world for my coding boot camp um, to streamline that whole process of student assignment submissions. So again, if you don't know no, don't know about the bootcamp, coderscampus.com forward slash bootcamp will take you to the bootcamp page. You can learn more about it. So it's a little meta, I know. So for this particular part of the process, the students should be able to do the following. They should be able to submit their assignments for review. So that's the first process. It goes from having nothing to creating a new uh, assignment for submission. Then that assignment will get submitted and, and hopefully be picked up by a code reviewer to go and, and actually do the code review. So while it's being picked up by a code reviewer, the student should see the status of each of the assignments. When they first submit their assignment for review, it's just sort of going to go into a pending status, a pending review status or something. But then when it gets picked up by a code reviewer and the re code review starts, boom, they'll see the status change. And that's what uh, that's what these cards will uh, allow them to see is the updated uh, status as it goes through the motions. Um, also, if a code reviewer starts to look at it, uh, at their code um, and starts reviewing it and realizes, oh, there's bugs or there needs to be changes, the code reviewer will send it back to the student for uh, review, for revision, I should say. So um, you're gonna have to be able to see that communication back and forth. There's gonna be, um, maybe in the card, we'll have like the latest comment or something in the card. I don't know yet, we'll see. Um, they should also see once the code is completed um, in terms of review, um, once the code reviewer has completed their review of the code, everything looks great and they've done the review and sent it back to the student, um, the student should be able to see that final code review for that assignment. In other words, they should be able to watch the video and get all that wonderful feedback from our code reviewers. So that should be part of the process as well. And then once they have reviewed the, the video and they got, they've got they gotten everything they need from it, then they can archive that particular card, um, you know, because they don't need it anymore. So. That's basically the gist of what we're going to try to accomplish. Obviously, we're not going to be able to do all this today, but that will be the process. So the workflow here of how it's going to work is, hey, we're going to go on the dashboard page and we're going to add some uh, cards with Bootstrap. So we'll learn more about cards. Um, and these cards will represent individual assignments that are submitted in the whole process that they go through. Um, and each of the cards will have sort of display the most important data, the most pertinent data that the students need to know about um, each assignment. And hey, if they want to, the student will be able to edit that card uh, and change any of the information inside of it. Cool? So without further ado, uh, that took a little while, but let's get coding, ladies and gentlemen. So we will flip over to our environment, which is here. Uh, this is our front end environment, our front end code. This is what the dashboard looks like right now. Not very pretty, is it? But that is where I have drawn in pencil a, a basic layout, a basic design, and I'm gonna try my best to start to get uh, that design uh, on the screen here. Before we can do that, I want to just look at um, Bootstrap uh, and go into Bootstrap and they have in their docs, they have in uh, components, you can see 
cards. So this is what cards are, an example of what it could look like. There could be an image on top, a title, some text, and then a button or something. And then here's the code for how to do it. Um, and each of these cards, you know, if you just want to have a body, that's it. That's what it could look like. If you don't want to have an image, you just want a card, a subtitle, and some text and some links. This is probably what we're going to go with. Uh, then here's the code. Um, so there's a bunch of different uh, ways that you can have cards um, on your screen. This is the kitchen sink. This is sort of everything. So you can see it's just a it's a nice way to. Um, oh, each of them can have headers too. That's kind of nice. Um, maybe I want to do that. Do I want to do I want to have it with a little header versus just like where was it this maybe that's cleaner i don't know i'm not a designer so let me just grab this code i'll copy it and this is sort of what we will uh get actually i won't copy this code i should say we're not actually using plain old bootstrap we're, we are using react bootstrap um which is a, a react bootstrap is a github thing uh a, a github repository not a thing it's a repository so let me go to the cards here so you'll see this looks very similar in terms of documentation, but this is the React version of the documentation. So there it is. Here's the code that I want to copy paste. So I'll copy this code um, and we can paste that sort of into our dashboard, right? So let's go to our dashboard um, index.js file. And what do we have here? So we have submit new assignment and then we have these assignments here. So these assignments uh, are, we, we get these assignments from the database. So let me go back to my screen here. So each of those assignments that you see, assignment one, two, three, four, five, actually come from the database. So each one of those should be a card, essentially, is what I'm saying. So instead of just being a link, a blue link with text, it should be a card. Um, and this is where we had those links displayed. So we're having, we're, we're going through each of the assignments and we're mapping the data. In other words, we're transforming the raw, you know, data, the raw, you know, JSON data. We're transforming it into link elements which is what you see here. So instead of transforming that raw data into a link element, I'm going to paste in that card stuff. We're gonna transform each one into a card. I'm gonna uh, control space to click here to import card. So that came here. We are importing card from React Bootstrap. That's what just happened there. Um, I'm gonna save it so that it reformats uh, the code. Uh, it's gonna update this side. So now you see we have one, two, three, four, five cards that are all very generic, right? The title needs to change. So the title could be the um, uh, title, uh, sorry, the title could be the, the what is it, the name of the, I forget the domain, the, the assignments, what is it called? The assignments, oh, we don't have a name for the assignment. We have an ID for the assignment. Interesting. I forgot to have an assignment number private what what should this be should this be a number for the assignment or the name for the assignment let's give it a name string name do we really don't have a name in here oh dear we need the human readable data so let's add get name there and then i'm going to reboot my server and when it does that hopefully it'll add that to the, the data model if all is good boom there it is alter table assignment add column name now it defaults to varchar255, so that limits the size of the name to be 255 characters. That should be fine, though. Um, famous last words. Should be fine. Ah, it's fine. So um, these assignments need a name. Uh, so um, anyway, we will do this. For now, we will have, instead of um, the card title here, we'll put in, put in assignment.id for now. So let me save that. So this is just going to say one, two, three, four, five, which is not very helpful. Um, but I might say assignment number there. So then, you know, this is a bit wonky. We'll, we'll have to change this and update this code. But for now, just to give you the idea of what it could look like, um, that's what it looks like. Um, the card subtitle might be the status, assignment dot status. I think that's the, uh, yeah, it needs to be submitted. So there you go. Now we have the status displayed. Um, the text here could be... I don't know, the, the, the most recent comment or something. For now, I think what we can do is we'll just have some paragraph um, paragraphs that represent the like the GitHub URL. So we'll have the GitHub URL. Oops, sorry. GitHub URL. And then we'll have assignment dot GitHub URL. Is that, or is it capital... It might be a capital H. 
No. What is it? Oh no. GitHub URL, so only capital U. I guess we don't have, I thought I had, oh, there you go, now they're, now they're showing up. It was just below it, I was missing it. Cool, and then um, we can have another paragraph for the uh, branch, assignment.branch, I think. Boom, oh, I guess it's just this one that doesn't have a GitHub URL or branch yet. Um, needs to be submitted is the state or the status branch main three whatever github url we might we can probably make this bold or something branch can be bold just to make it stand out a little bit now obviously this is crude right i'm not going for perfection at this very point uh, at this very moment um i might do you know maybe a bit more margin between the subtitle and the uh, card text. So we might be able to add some style here and say uh, margin top is like 1M. That might bump it down a bit. I don't know. Sure, whatever. And then down here, some links, we could have this be a, a button. So this could be a button. And the what you call it to just say edit the name of the button could just be edit now i'm going to control click or control space here and then click here to import that that comes from um uh what's it called um bootstrap so that'll say edit right and this edit button right now won't do anything so we'll want the link to go to um actually why don't we do this Let's not wrap it in card link. Let's wrap it with navigate to, and then it needs to go to a certain URL. Is that how we do it? Oops. Right, and the URL it will go to is what? Um, oh, why, what's, what did I do? Module failed. What did I, what did I, uh, closing tag? What did I forget? Card body. Oh, this is not a closing tag. There. Um, oh, interesting. So when you say navigate to, and then put a button there, uh, it doesn't work that way. I guess it's the other way around. Is navigate to, no, I guess it, maybe that's something that we do for the button on click. On click, we can have it execute a function and the function can just do the redirects, right? Um, so there's a good way to do this and a bad way to do this. Um, when you're doing on click here, I could just say window location href which I think for now is okay, but it's not. there's a better solution using um, using uh, React Router. There's a, a better way to do it. But for now, we'll just, we'll get it out the door, baby. We'll just ship this code. So the href will point to what? I think it's slash assignments, slash, and then the ID of the assignment, right? So, um, uh, oh no, we need that. Assignment.id, I think. Okay, so we have the edit button. So when I click on it, Nothing happens. Button on click. Maximum update depth exceeded. This can happen when a component calls set state inside of use effect, but use effect either does not have a dependency or whatever. Uh, warning, maximum update depth. So use effect. So it's saying I'm missing It needs JWT in there. Okay. Uh, warning, validate DOM nesting. P cannot appear as a descendant of P. Oops, did I not close tags properly? P cannot appear as a descendant of P. Well, that looks correct to me. Paragraph tag here, paragraph tag here. So that's just a warning. 
but where? Anyway, I don't know if I want to care about that one right now. Um, so, yeah, when I click on the button... Oh, there, now it did something. So, oh, is this the silly problem where if you click on the border, it doesn't... Oh, no, it's, it's working. So, assignment one, if I click on edit here, assignment two... Yeah, okay. Assignment three, there we go. So, now we have the start of something for the cards. However, currently the cards are all lined up um, in a in uh, rows so it's all row one row two row three um so i kind of want these to be more in a sort of grid fashion um because they're all sort of uniform so grid works well when they're all sort of uniform um so what we can do here for the div i believe um is there a i think we could say class name is uh is it just grid or is it d grid it might be d grid i just talked about this um how you do uh, bootstrap grid. Um, sorry. Flex and grid. So do they talk about grid in here? Display, flex, da da da. Direction, do they have grid in here? Where was that? I was on a uh, a website somewhere that was talking about this. So I could say uh, React Bootstrap Flex Grid Grid System React Bootstrap. Okay, it probably gives the same sort of um, uh, details. Responsives. These are all columns. Blah blah blah. Row. Form stack components. I thought there was a. What was the keywords I was using to find that? <laughs> Welcome to the world of coding, ladies and gentlemen. This is what real coders do. They just Google stuff. You know, it's called being a uh, what's it? A reference coder instead of uh, instead of knowing it all off the top of your head. I definitely don't know all this stuff off the top of my head. I constantly have to look stuff up, and that's okay. That's literally the the name of the game for pretty much every single coder out there, uh, unless you have some sort of, you know, uh, you know, picture perfect memory, what's that called? Eidetic memory, or I don't know. Uh, okay, so uh, stack forms components. Getting started, style sheets, examples, blah, 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 blah. I think it was like D, wasn't it like D grid or something? Let me say this has to be degrid. Spacing. Is that what it's called? Spacing under utilities? Is that? D grid. Okay, div class, D, D grid. So then I need to flip the, uh, I guess by default it's on rows, but I need to flip it to columns. Um, so that's spacing. Margin, top left, whatever, sizes, yeah. Um, so then I want to, there's another property in, so this is just bootstrap, right? Is this just the boot? Yeah, this is just bootstrap. So I want to do, uh, uh, change the, so CSS grid, let me just say some examples for CSS grid. I can probably, you know, get the, uh, get the gist based off of actual CSS grid. So if I look at the CSS code here, display grid, uh, template columns, grid gaps. So template columns, right? So something like that. So we can say bootstrap template grid template columns. There's gotta be something there with get bootstrap. I mean, I guess they're using Excuse me, they're, I guess they just are using their regular old column stuff. I don't love it though. I'd rather, hmm. <laughs> okay, fair enough. So what I'll do, no, I don't want to do that. 
so what I'm fighting with in my mind right now is the um, you could use uh, the all these column markers and say hey on a medium screen use this many columns or whatever on a large screen use this many columns it's it's fine you can do that but I think because I'm working with um, these uniform uh, these uniform uh, boxes grids or whatever or uh, cards um, I don't think I need to be this granular I think I can leverage uh, this kind of thing where you have the grid template columns so if I just say where's the degrid but then how would you actually put that into I think that would just need to be style not a class I think it has to be style and then it's just grid template columns like this right you say grid template columns and you would say 100 pixels 100 pixels 100 pixels now it might need to be more than 100 pixels um, that's one now it didn't seem to do what I needed to do let me go back to uh, grid gap display grid we don't need to grid, grid gap it's interesting it doesn't look like it actually grid gap is I think it's just gap now gap might like gap two or something that'll put a little bit of spacing between them maybe gap five it's interesting because it doesn't so it doesn't look like that's even working so this div might not work with those interesting but why wouldn't the div oops because this should definitely start to have some spacing and whatnot between them so this Display grid, grid template columns. And it is not, because their example here, they have the class wrapper and then the class of box A, B, C, D. So the wrapper the wrapper is the div, right? And that's kind of like our wrapper here. This is the div wrapper. On the wrapper, we have display grid and columns and everything, right? And this is the wrapper. So we have display grid and grid template columns, um, grid gap, blah, blah, blah. And then the boxes have this styling. Um, but really, this styling doesn't really matter, right? This is just core, uh, color and radius, and there's some padding inside. But um, there's nothing there's nothing special or, or grid CSS grid related about that code. So it's odd. It looks, it should be laying it out differently unless the cards themselves are overriding that functionality. But I don't believe they should be because we definitely are getting the, for the display grid, it's definitely getting the important marker. But if we said display, you know, grid in here, And then not worry about the gaps. Again, it doesn't uh, it doesn't do anything. Grid template columns. If we made it, uh, you know, 300, 300 to make two. Yeah, that's annoying. Because if we said display flex, um, that would probably stay the same. But then if we said uh, whatever it is, flex direction. And then we said uh, column instead of row. Oops, no. Interesting, eh? Because flex direction column should have switched this around. Because I think it's row. It's row by default for flex. Isn't that interesting? Deflex, and then Uh, let's see react this is react bootstrap layout so let me see where is it utilities where is the flex oops flex oh that's helpful <sighs> layout grid 
there is no D flex. If I say D flex, where is all the good documentation on? So bootstrap D flex. Like where is in utilities? Is this different? This is 4.0. So let me do 5.0 because I think, or maybe I'm using 4.0. I guess I'm using four. Um, flex box container, deflex, and then you can have all these things, direction, right? So flex row, okay. So instead of doing it like this, we can say deflex, and then we can say flex column to see again if that changes anything. I'm not sure why these guys are not behaving correctly. I mean, I guess it's something to do with the fact that it's on a div instead. Ooh, that's maddening. Because I've put on the card, that's certainly not going to make any difference. Um, <laughs> Why would that not affect it? And not even the gaps or anything. So it's just not responding to... Yeah, display flex, flex direction. Because as you can see here, when you add a flex column, they do this. So you kind of do want flex row actually, but I mean, it's flex row by default. It should try to line up all the, the cards next to each other um, by default. And you see it's, it says flex row now, but it's not. Unless one of these, oh, hold on. I wonder if the cards themselves, no, because the cards themselves don't look like they take up um, an entire row, but you see it's creating another div for, oh, Trevor. Oh, Trevor. I know what's happening. Oh, it's maddening. There you go. There's the, the aha, aha light bulb moment. Okay. So sorry, guys. So what's happening is it's creating a new div for every single card. Right? And when you create a new div, a div is a new row. So I'm literally, it's doing exactly what I'm telling it to do. It is having a new div with, with flex attached to each div um, for every single card. And that's not what you want. You want one wrapper for all of the cards, which is exactly the code I was looking at in the example. It had one wrapper for all the cards. I have one wrapper per card. Not going to work. So my apologies. Basically, what we want to do here is we want to wrap um, the uh, assignments um, here, the assignments.map we want to wrap it with a div. So let me think, how do I accomplish that um, here? Like if I had a div and then a closing div and then assignments map needs to be then, I see it needs to be wrapped in um, curly, uh, curly, curly braces. Okay, so the div on this card assignments map so this div needs to go down. And then do we need to wrap this whole assignments bit in a curly bracket, curly brace? And then we don't know the key anymore. Well, this one doesn't need a key actually. So the the card I guess needs the key. And this class name is the div flex. Ha. Huh. <laughs> There you go, I fixed it. So this doesn't look good, right? So that's why I, I was saying I, I would prefer to use grid. Let me use dgrid. Um, and then I think uh, grid, uh, is it grid column or gl grid row? No, so I think you need, there, there might be a class for it, but the other way to do it is with style. This is what we had seen in the example where we had, um, oh, what was it called, column, 
or was it grid column, grid template columns, right? So grid template columns, and you can specify the width for each one. So 200 pixels, 200 pixels, if you want two, there you go, side by side. Um, and then you can have 200 pixels if you want three side by side. But as you can see, the uh, they're not laying themselves out very well, right? I was hoping that the grid would be nice uh, for doing this. Now the gap is also, doesn't seem like it's coming into play. Maybe it is. Okay, so but these the, the way these are laid out is interesting. That's unfortunate. So the, the way the cards are laid out. Um, oh man, am I gonna am I gonna be eating my words in that I thought this was gonna be laid out nicely with grid and I'm it's not. So am I gonna have to after all that pain and suffering of realizing what my problem was, am I gonna fall back to um, <laughs> I might fall back to not having a div. Ooh, that's frustrating. Welcome to coding, ladies and gentlemen. So I might, let me think. I might have a row. And then the cards would be inside, well, there'd be a column. But this is for each, yeah, this one gets tricky. For each assignment, we basically want to have the row outside, I think. Let's try it like this. So the row will be outside of the iterating assignments, and then we'll have a column, a column defined inside for each card. I'll move this up into the column um, thing here. We'll need to rewrap all of this code with curly brackets to make it function correctly. Import row, import column. I just put my phone on silent so it stops beeping at me. Um, okay. So, yeah, that's already looking a bit more correct. So I think the problem here is that the, the height of these things are changing, right? The height, I was hoping that when you made it a grid, it would force all the cards to be the same height but the heights and stuff are, are differing because of the fact that um, they have different content inside of them. So, right, because this one has no content and this one has some content, so this one um, stretches down. It's like we want the cards to be uh, it's like I want the cards to be a fixed size. It's kind of like I want each card so it has a width. And it's like I want it to have a height as well. Of like, you know, 18 rem or something. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So that's, it's not amazing in terms of the layout but it's a little better. Um, I'm curious though to see if, if instead of having row and column, what, what would the grid look like now that I've um, changed things? So instead of having row and column, let me, uh, <laughs> let, me, let me change this back to a div with class name dgrid and style equal to, uh, what was it? Uh, grid template columns. And each one is going to be 18. Oh, but this is the problem, right? So if I say 18 rem here, <coughs> sorry, and then I have to replace <coughs> the row with a div, <coughs> excuse me. Um, and then I need to get rid of the column. Let me comment out columns. So we have dgrid. Oops, and then 18 rem. So. Yeah. It looks tidy-ish. 
But the problem is, is that we kind of do want it to be a little bit responsive based on... Uh, but I guess that's just wrap, right? Then we can have uh, uh, grid wrap. What is the f flex wrap? Was there, was there a grid wrap? Maybe there's not. Maybe I'm thinking about flex. Overflow wrap? There's potentially a way to wrap these, and that's that's through um, that's through grid wrap, CSS grid wrapping, autofill. You either use autofill or auto fit as the first argument. Oh, and this is the repeat, right? So if you use the repeat, so instead of uh, yeah autofill or auto fit. So instead of doing this with the grid template columns. Uh, well, I can, instead of doing it 18, 18, 18, you can do repeat here to save yourself, um, why did it say result path? Repeat to save yourself from having to type 18 a bunch of the times. So you can have it repeat, um, and say, uh, auto fill, I guess, and then 18 rem. So it'll figure it, it'll figure it out for you. Uh, grid style repeat grid to template columns is that a different uh, maybe it's a different style grid template hmm that's annoying how do you accomplish that with Interesting. How do you accomplish? Maybe the whole thing needs to be like this. Is that how do you accomplish it? There you go. Okay. There we go. See, that looks better. That's what I was going for. There we go. Sorry, my, my, uh, my grid um, knowledge is clearly showing itself. My lack thereof. So let's add a gap. Okay, so now they're laid out. See, this This is why I said we should use grid, because this just looks good. This is what I was hoping for, right? They expand and they contract based on um, all this stuff. So uh, we. this is our start to making this work nicely. Um, shout out to grid for having repeat and grid template columns. Um, now, what's the difference between autofill and autofit? Again, I am not a, uh, I am not a front end design guru by any means. So, I mean, these both look like they're doing the same thing. So, fair enough. Um, that's the start, right? And you can say edit, and the edit button should still work. Yeah. So, wonderful. So, basically, now we have the start of something. Now, obviously, this stuff, you know, it doesn't look that great. And this is where we could probably do something inside of each of the cards where we bring in, you know, for the card's body. We can do, you know, more... Uh, more styling, right? We could add in something like uh, uh, for each card body, the body itself could be the wrapper, right? So you can have class of D grid again. Although I think D flex, I think flex box here might be the winner. Um, so we can do flex, and you see it. It tries to you know lay it out in a, in a column. Um, then you can say flex direction, or sorry, in a row. Uh, or flex column, I think is the class. Um, so let's see, so you're starting to, to look a little better. And then you wanna justify the content. So you wanna justify content um, center. So we center it a bit, that's close. We can also say gen justify content around, see? Yeah, baby. So with some minimal tweaks there, now it's starting to look much better, right? So we're we're saying uh, now there's there's justify content around and there's justify content uh, spacing, I think is the other one. So this one not is not as good, right? So I think justifying the content around where we have to fit it. So it tries to fit from top to bottom all the content sort of justified in the center ish. Um, that's looking a lot better, right? The edit buttons are still not perfect, but. Um, you know, just that little tweak there with this adding some flex to the uh, card body uh, has done a lot. 
for helping us out. Now, you might be able to do something for the button and say, uh, you know, uh, make it, uh, uh, what you call it, uh, align it to the bottom or something or stick it to the bottom, who knows. But uh, for now, this is looking a lot better. So going forward now, basically, the layout that I've sort of penciled in for our cards here is, okay, these are all in the need to be submitted category or phase. Um, what... I've laid out is I'm looking over my piece of paper here that I jotted down some notes. Um, there should really be an in progress section. So each of these should be in its own section. Um, so there should be like a, a heading for, you know, these are the ones that are in progress, right? So they can, you know, needs to be submitted or, you know, submitted waiting to be reviewed or pending review. And then, you know, in review, these are all sort of in the in progress category of cards and then when you scroll down or something or maybe at the top because uh, the ones at the top might be the most important could be the completed ones so ones that are completed will show up at the top uh, so that way we're sort of categorizing all of these cards because right now if we had all the cards just sort of you know thrown at us in the screen it might be a bit a bit too um too much so we, we want to add some organization. So we can organize the cards such that the ones that are completed are at the top, the ones that are sort of in progress are in the middle, and the ones that are archived are at the bottom or something so that you can just hide them at the bottom and not worry about it. And then there should be a button to submit a new assignment. And this button here, um, we can change it to be a, uh, what you call it, button. Um, uh, bootstrap button. And that guy could be at the top, right? So we want to have a way to submit a new assignment at the top. Um, and then, you know, you, we probably want to make this large or something so we can make it, uh, you know, the class name um, could be, is it B, or is it, maybe it's size, sorry. Is it size? Yeah, size LG, I think. So we have a large button here. Um, I like the blue. We can add a little, you know, icon in there, stuff like that. Just, you know, th these are all the little, the little tweaks that we can make um, to to get things looking a little better. We can wrap our button in a div and add some bottom margin. So we can say class name um, margin bottom is MB. Maybe put like four. So that'll add some margin below it, maybe five to push the stuff down. So we can submit new assignment on the top. Um, we can even maybe, I don't know, center it or something. Is it text center that will center it? On the oops on the screen yeah um, although that, that kind of looks awful maybe you want it on the right do we want that on the right or text right right align anyway whatever let's let's not worry about that right now um, and then maybe what we can do is for the edit buttons maybe don't make them blue as well it seems like a lot of blue on the screen so maybe these buttons um, can have, it's called variant is the one that uh, Bootstrap uses for their elements. Um, so the variant could be something like, you know, secondary or, or something to make it gray. I don't know. So who knows? This is all, this is stuff that we can play with uh, just to make it look a little bit better than it was before. Cause obviously before it looked pretty bad. So this is our start. So going forward, I guess in the next lesson, I want to add um, a bit more structure or categories to these cards. Um, and we'll have to, you know, shift the statuses around for the cards as well so that we can actually have them in different sections and whatnot. Um, but yeah, that's sort of what we can start to do for our assignments. And I'm curious if I clicked on this one and then said submit assignment, does that even do anything? I don't think so. That doesn't change the status, right? No. So, um, yeah, that's what we can, uh, that's what we can do next is add some categories to these things, um, and see where we go from there. So thank you very much for sticking with me through this video and allowing me to stumble through my uh, my CSS grid stuff. So my apologies, I should have done more work ahead of time. But again, hopefully it's reassuring to you <laughs> that you see me with like 15 years of experience uh, stumbling my way through the basics, the absolute basics of grid. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed that and I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson. Don't forget to subscribe above me if you wanna see more content like this. Um, I, you know, all you gotta do is click, it's free and uh, you'll get more great content in your subscription feed and hopefully in your home feed um, from uh, this series. So looking forward to seeing you in the next lesson. Take care of yourself. Happy learning and bye for now.